Eyes on the front, one. This should be fine. When you and Tango emerge onto the streets of Ikebukuro, you pause for a moment in your concealed position to take in the sight of the once lively town, now ravaged by the day of war. Oh wow. <sighs> well, Kanga, I think the patrols are gone. Hold up, partner. I sense something. <laughs> Stay down! There's more of them coming the other way. As Kango tries to shield you from view with his own body, you shrink into the shadow of the building. So this is the battleground of uh, the warmongers and the rule makers. Shh. Okay, they're gone. Let's move on out, partner. Hey, you listen. <sighs> you saved me, Kango. Oh wait, there was. <laughs> There's a better option. Oh well, don't mention it. Uh, what are uh, partners for? Right. Let's head to that building over there for cover. On my signal. Ready? Mm, go! Kango weaves through the blind spots of the troops, guarding the streets of Ikebukuro like a pro, guiding you safely along. Ikebukuro is basically my backyard. I've spent almost as much time here as in Shinjuku. I'll just sneak around, it's real nostalgic. Huh. Just in a walk in the park for you, huh? You've always been a naughty boy, haven't you? N not naughty <laughs> Me? As if! Hey! Quit looking at me like that, partner! It's like you don't even believe me. Anyway, anyway, long story short, I have a bit of experience ducking through the streets like this. Try not to get caught. Me and Tetsuya used to get caught up in skirmishes between cops and gangs and... You, you what? Is that why you used to play hooky all the time? To play cops and gangsters? Yeah, <laughs> Pipe down, Jiro. If you keep me yelling in my ear, I'll shut this thing off. Come on, Ivo. Let's get going. And, uh... What's the plan again? Oh, boy. <laughs> Actually, I, I forgot to. I, I took a... This is my second recording session, so I can't remember what happened last time. Let me think. It's fine, it's fine. I'll figure it out. Before you left, Shiro was saying something about... I want you to make contact with our informant. Huh? Informant? If you got one of those... Hang on. I want Ryota and Toji to hear this as well. R19, would you mind patching us through? Affirmative. Running Plan D protocols installed in the system to establish covert communications. I'm also sending the additional information provided by the Berserkers and the Wisemen to each of your devices, along with your own intel. Ryota and Toji. Excellent. There we go. Thank you, R19. Can everyone hear me? I'd like to go over our most current intel once more before Kengo and Arthur head out. This includes the information we shared with us by our allies, the Berserkers and the Wisemen, as well as intel leaked by the surviving enemy forces after the battle with the Scali Poka at Penitentiary Academy. Hmm. Combined, these sources paint a fairly detailed picture of the Western Guild he belonged to. The leftovers of the Scali Poka's army? What do we know? First things first. Have you all received the files from Arnie King? Good. Take a look now. Here's what we've learned from the world representatives who appeared before us that fateful day. For each of the 23 worlds connected here in Tokyo, there is a ranking order, and the 23 individuals who stand at the pinnacles of each of those worlds are here. Ooh. Excluding Surtern as the source of the Genociders, the remaining 21 are equally placed among the three true guilds, so seven each. That is, seven reside in each. Okay, thank you, Shiro. <laughs> now, these guilds hold the portals to the east, south, and west, and have continued their war against one another across loops. We don't know much about the east, even in events. 
First, there are the, the rule makers who control the Eastern Portal. That would be Michael and uh, Ama Amaterasu, and I, I forgot what the third one is. Then there are the invaders who control the Southern Portal. This is uh, what's it? <laughs> this is uh, the 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 the, com the comedy clone. I already forgot. Both. That's it. And P Perrin and Temujin. Shiva, Yoritomo, and Tida, and Marduk, and Mephistopheles. And finally, there are the Warmongers, who control the Western Portal. This is the guild to which Tuskop the Poco, whose army we took on Penitenti Academy, belongs. After recent contact with their informant, we have learned that there have been, has been significant change in the tensions between the three true guilds. According to Tuskop the Poco himself, this is due to an intentionally devised irregularity. Throughout the endless loops occurring in Tokyo, the three true guilds have exchanged members and experimented tactically. I see. So they're not necessarily stable members. They've also formed a variety of different packs and locked themselves into a stalemate for a long period of time. This situation bears some historical resemblance to the battles that were held for sport by the nobility of a certain nation, which were governed by specific rules. I would not be able to determine which you're referring to. Everything was strictly laid out. From the taking of hostages to how reparations should be made. They even put restrictions upon the involvement of certain individuals. In the case of the three true guilds, however, the stalemate continued until the Scalipoka recently put an end to it. Apparently, he was not a fan of this custom of recreational battles. It remains to be seen whether this development is one we should fear or welcome, but regardless. Belor. It would appear that Tuskalipoka has a sympathizer among the world representatives who approve of his breaking of the pact. That sympathizer is, in our turn, our contact. Oh, that's a surprising ally. Well, maybe not ally. Uh, informant might be neutral, but we're getting information either way. We have been told that we'll need to establish direct contact with this individual if you wish to learn more about this. Uh, Shiro, it's just me. Or does that smell like a trap? No, it's not just you. I must confess, I am quite convinced it is one, Kengo. Even so, I believe it is in our best interest to make contact with this informant. Well, if you say so, I guess there's nothing else for it. I have a good reason for asking this of you. You remember about the entity who introduced themselves as Mahakala during that meeting beneath Penitentiary Academy, correct? The informant has promised to divulge information pertaining to them if we present ourselves at the meeting place in Ikubukuro. The one who kidnapped Mr. Mononobe? We can get intel on Hakala? However, not just anyone will do. The informant has specified that we must send Arathan. Furthermore, if we do intend to gain this information for ourselves, then there is no time to waste. What do you mean, Shiro? Ah, oh, jeez, Shiro. Can he say anything straight? Break it down for me, will ya? Ah, oh, Kengo. If this information is legitimate, what do you think will happen to the informant? Huh? Oh, I see. This individual was involved in the breaking of a long-standing pact between the world representatives. Surely even you can imagine what would happen to him if you were found out. Well, Tuskali Pokem is, like, kind of dead, too. Okay, yelled <laughs> the fuck. Uh, he's in for some kind of punishment. Yes, he'll probably be come under attack by the combined powers of the older, uh, the other world representatives. It only stands to reason that someone who ruins the plans of others will become a target. This is especially true when it occurs between those in positions of authority. Therefore, we can surmise that our inform informant is facing danger on all sides. No, not only from the Eastern and Southern Guilds, but likely from the Warmongers as well. Ah, so that's why I'm here with you, Arthur. Ah, yes. It wouldn't last very long if I sent you out in full force now that Ikebukuro is under their rule. That's why it had to be you, Kengo. At any rate, the two of you need to move quickly and avoid being seen. You have to find our informant before anyone from the three true guilds gets to him. 
That shouldn't be too hard for you, Kengo. Of the summoners, you know Ikabuku the best. And besides... <laughs> I know what you're gonna say, Shiro. They're probably gonna end up in a fight, right? And let me guess. Let me do. It'll be my job to make sure nothing happens to her. Then, well, lucky for you, I just got a broken Valentine hand. You should have to pick things up faster when it comes to fighting, Kenko. However, if you do come across a world representative of two, it's likely they'll start fighting over Ayrton. Just like they did during the battle against Scoutly Poka and the Penitentia can be. Remember, this is someone who gladly took part in the dissolution of a peace pact. He won't shy away from a fight. Be prepared. I say, bring it on. So anyway, does this mystery rep have a name? Then I brief you on that already, Kengo. If you'll recall. One of the 23 other worlds is the, fa the fairy realm of Tiern and Nog. Home to a variety of, of beings, its world representative is none other than... The Invincible King of the Giants, Balor. Oh, right. I remember them. In uh, chapter 10, I believe we saw Blur going into battle with the rule makers. Um, along with the Varga. So, maybe we'll see our Varga too. Was it the rule makers? I'm pretty sure it's the rule makers. Maybe not. Huh, so, this Balor is waiting at the place on this memory you gave me, and we have to go meet him. The King of the Giants, huh? This is awesome. I'm ready to test my strength against someone like that. Aren't you, partner? Sure am, partner. I mean, I mean, I know I've got to put your safety first, but hey, there's no guarantee we'll just get to sit down and have a peaceful chat, right? I'm not not be a smart hero, but I do know that sometimes you just need to muscle to get the job done, right? Anyways, we're nearly there. <laughs> ah, quick, get in here, partner. Seems like someone's beaten us to the spot. Tango grabs your hands and pulls you in uh, to a tight place in between two buildings so that you're both out of sight. So soldiers again. Do you think they're after our informant? Don't think they're following us. Yeah, just look at them. They're obviously on the prowl for a way bigger fish than us. Like, literally bigger. A giant or something. You know how it goes. The early bird catches the fish. You better hurry. Uh... <laughs> so we're gonna charge them before they can call for backup. That okay with you? Charge! That's the way, partner. Let's do this. I'm gonna show you just how much stronger I got training in the dungeon. That's the Ikebukuro dungeon. That is still not translated. No. I think I equipped the wrong AR on Kotaro. Oh, get it. Never mind. <laughs> oh, wait, it's only one phase. I was worried about nothing. Eyes on the front, too. No battle. The highly proficient soldiers counter your attacks with efficient use of both long and short range weaponry. Even so. Not gonna happen! Hell yeah! That's the way, partner. Leave the rest to me. Giant Basher! The sec secret artifact on Kengo's arms released a surge of electricity that quills around his legs. Take this! <laughs> Slick moves. Oh yeah, that's right. I He got like an Evo. I'm not sure if it coincided with the release of chapter uh, 11, but I'm pretty sure that Evo gave him like omnidirectional movement. Uh, moving like a bolt of lightning, Kengo closes the distance between himself and the enemy in a single bound. 
Or was it just general extent movement? I forget. He's only a blur as he dashes about through the group of soldiers, while senseless in his wake. That was pretty flashy, Kengo. That's my partner. So this is your new power, cool. <laughs> Were you watching, partner? Just so you know, I've got even more up my sleeve since powering up. I'll show you the rest later. But first, we've gotta. Yeah. Ugh, they've got backup ready. Look at them all. How'd they get here so fast? Oh, whoa. Not good. We better run for it, partner. Go, 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 go. Hey, are these two still there? Ah, curses. They got the drop on us. Are they surveilling the entire area? No. The response time was, wait, was too quick even for that. This just isn't adding up. Regardless, it would be best to assume that surveillance is ongoing of any of and all events related to the War of the Three True Guilds. Oh, it's, uh, it's Shuichi. It certainly is a conundrum, though. I'll give you that. Hmm? <laughs> Who's? How's it going, Shiro? You keeping it together? Shuichi! You're back! Does that mean... If... I've completed my mission down here in the Ikubuku underground. Now I've just got to wait for the right moment. Would you mind filling me in on your plight? I heard those two were meeting with an informant, but that's all I know. Right. Actually, as it so happens. So that's how it is. Understood. I get the particulars. And your doubts. It's no wonder you came to the conclusion that they must have some foreknowledge of events. You agree then? The response was immediate, too fast to have come after uh, reacting to a surveillance feed. Even if they were to give orders to, for backup to move in the moment those two went on the offensive, it couldn't possibly have gotten there that fast. It seems incredible, but I can only conclude that they made their calculations based on predictions of the future. <laughs> sure, that makes sense. If they know what actually they'll take ahead of time, they can plan their moves accordingly. That's the kind of ploy only a true genius like my little brother could come up with. What'd you say? When you put it that way, it sounds as though you have some suspicions of your own, Chuchi. That I do. As you know, time in Tokyo is on a loop. Now imagine that you had access to the wealth of information about all of the scenarios that have come to pass up until now. If you did, you could easily calculate and react in real time. In fact, I bet you could even predict the future. Naturally, this would require a vast amount of resources, but for a genius like my little bro or, let's say, any one of those frightful children acting as guild masters of the three true guilds, it would be possible. You mean? The masters of the three true guilds are brilliant children who were created in a laboratory. Hmm. Uh, this is Bertro and Curran. Is Curran the guild leader of the rule makers? Hmm. For the purpose of recording all the data produced by the game being carried out, out through the app here in Tokyo. In order to maximize their brain power, they are applied with every kind of scientific technique available. My brother is the fourth of these children. He was designed to be a reserve guild master. Huh, so that's his big secret. He was created by the East. I know they ran, they escaped from the East, but it seems that uh, they were co cooperating indefinitely for the stalemates, and um, it seems that uh, they they were all under like a, a common strategy to uh, make one guild master that would be able to uh, have powers like Duo, I suppose, uh, and have all this uh, experimentation done on them. It's important to have a spare parts on hand for any system, just in case the worst should happen. As for me, I couldn't cut it as a reserve. I'm just a failed product, you see. Ex experimental children? How awful! Eh, I guess, but I don't have the capacity for an emotional response like that anymore. Emotions only get in the way of accurate calculation. I do st still feel for my brother with whom I share my DNA, though. Then again, that's probably why I'm a failure, isn't it? 
<laughs> oh, please don't say such things, Shuji. Are you sad for my brother, Shiro? I think I would be happy if you were. For him and for you. You haven't had an easy life, have you, Shuichi? Hmm. Thank you. That's what I should say, isn't it? I'm not 100% sure that's the correct response, but... See? This is why Mori Talk always <laughs> is always getting so frustrated with me. <laughs> getting back on track. Those guild masters are blasted with exceptionally high brain power, which allows them to record the events of the game. Even now, they must em be employing every method at their disposal to maintain surveillance across all of the devices upon which this app is installed. Every method and every device at their disposal, with every molecule of their mind. Hmm. Like I said, with that kind of data and processing power at hand, predicting the future wouldn't be impossible. Much in the same way my little brother was used to protect what was going to happen with astonishing accuracy. You mean to say that the three true guilds are privy to everything we do? If they can observe and predict our every action, how can we possibly prevail? Hang on, Chiro. With every molecule of their mind, remember? In other words, they've got nothing more to spare. Those children are expending the full sum of their brain power on surveillance and the recording. To clarify, they are unlikely to be actively involved in any app battles or guild conflicts around here at present. I don't understand. If they have nothing to do with our situation, why bring them up at all? Is that why Bircho is like, has uh, like glint, uh, snackable glint in concentration? Just big braining? It's not like you to be so frivolous. You must have something to add, surely. <laughs> <laughs> Your faith astounds me, Shiro. But you're right. I do believe there's a conclusion. I expect that there's an irregularity of immense consequence has occurred. See, right now, my second biggest concern is why Duo was taken this late in the game. Which comes right after the first. Why did he allow himself to be separated from me? I just can't get past that. Anyway, my point being that if you need to collect the replacement, there must be some issue with the original parts. In short, you suspect that something is up with the Guildmasters of the Three True Guilds. Some sign of this mysterious issue was uncovered, and so Duo was taken as a chance. Is that correct? <laughs> yep, you got it in one. You sure are quick on the update, Shiro. Those child Guildmasters exist to observe and preserve the data. Tell me, what do you think would happen if they started to use that data themselves for some other purpose? Personally, I believe something is happening here. Something never seen in any of the previous loops. Hmm. What's that? You discovered but Laura's whereabouts. Duh. I certainly have, Shiva. I've made my calculations and predicted the future. I'll transfer the details of Laura's position to you. Make sure you head there by the specified time. Don't be late. Why are you telling me this? What are you trying to do, Guildmaster? <sighs> to Scatly Poke and Balor collaborated to break one of the pacts between the guilds. As a guild member affected by their actions, don't you think that's an act worthy of approach, Shiva? Besides, you alone among the warmongers are capable of subjugating Balor. When his evil eye releases its cursed smoke, anyone who looks upon it will be condemned to death and count down. Yet, as you fight in blind darkness with your third eye closed, you are able to withstand it. You, who it is said who can crush even galaxies, are the warmonger's greatest weapon. The weapon that will ensure that this war fulfills its potential. Such is the outcome that m my mind has deduced. Ugh, spare me, your shikat, Mary Guildmaster Bertro. You have given me reasons why it is I who must fight. You have not given your own reasons for taking action. Reproach for breaking the pact, since when have you ever concerned yourself with such things? Never before have I known you to pay the slightest attention to who has been destroyed or to which ha that which has been broken. You may bear the title of Guildmaster, but you have barely left a finger outside of your role as a record keeper. In fact, you have barely even deigned to converse with me before now. Why doesn't change? 
Uh, does it really matter, Shiva? Unless I'm very much mistaken. You actively want to fight Balor, don't you? Hmm. All you ever want to do is challenge strong bones for the progression of your physical and spiritual cultivation. You've even fought against your fellow world representatives Balor in past loops. Oh, yes, he's very strong. He's always been exactly the sort of opponent you seek. That is, until, following a certain incident, he locked himself away as an inmate on Death Drone Penitentiary Academy. Since then, you have been unable to pit yourself against him. This is your chance to fight Balor with all of your might. Isn't it the culmination of your greatest wish, Shiva? After all the training you have put yourself through, mentally and physically, over the course of these past loops, don't you wish to test yourself against Balor one more time? Hmm. Uh, besides, it's a mood point. I can't be the only one to have mentioned this, but... There isn't a world representative among you who acts in the name of the three true guilds, is there? Hmm. Every single one of you seeks to fulfill your own purpose. You only happen to be part of the same guild for the moment. I'm starting to understand how these three true guilds can face each other and yet still have like individuals who have conflicting interests now. Because like these are all... I, I was always wondering how it would work out with these three true guilds in terms of the individual worlds uh, from the 23 worlds, well 21 in this case, seem to uh, want to have their mythology reign over all others. But it wouldn't make sense for seven to be shared among them once the last on top. So it, the fact that they're trading among themselves uh, regularly like this uh, kind of explains it. They're just they're not in it for the guild itself. They're rather they're in it uh, to be in a winning guild and eventually climb their way to the top. So there is no loyalty among a specific guild. The man called Chivo stares intensely at, at the boy in front of him for a time before nodding to himself, seeming to reach some conclusion. You are entirely correct. You have the way. You have the way of it, Guildmaster Bershow. The suppression of delusion and the endeavor of abstinence. The cultivation of these two things is all that I desire. In order to crush the galaxy in these hands of mine, I need the aid of others, but only for that one purpose. No more. With that, she was feet pound at the pavement as he dashes off into the distance in the blink of an eye. Fight, Shiva. Fight until you are contented. That is my own wish as one who supports the battle of the others. But I must say, abstinence. You claim that your heart's desire, Shiva. <laughs> if that's the case, why is that you never show so much as the, the mere stretch of a smile? To think that you're forced to bury your true wish deep, deep inside. Oh, how truly tragic. All I want is for everyone in this world to be able to laugh with total abandon, humor, and war. These are the only two things regarding which I cannot submit to orders like some machine. Sure, user transition. Damn! There's hardly a gap between bullets to dash you. Hang in there, okay, partner? <laughs> This is impossible. What are we going to do? Shall we retreat or regroup? Or... <laughs> Come on, you boorish brutes. Quit ringing on your, my reunion with my adorable grandchild. Grandchild? What was that? Yeah, it's Blor. The soldiers roll around, automatically responding to the overwhelming sense of bloodlust at their backs. Whoops! Did you catch sight of my gaze? Oh, you poor fools. In that case, I won't hesitate to pass judgment upon you, as is my kingly right. Only kidding. There's no one here with the right to boast of being kingly. Just a lowly dusser or windmate. That being said, this evil eye of mine is just as deadly to all who see it now as it was when I called myself a king. Glare of the doomed! Gah! <laughs> From one eye of this giant dressed in prison stripes seeps an ominous fog, 
As you watch, this fog seems to be sucked into the eyes of the soldier who, who met his gaze. <laughs> Whoa! What the heck? <laughs> I've been waiting for this. I've waited so long. So very long. There's no mistaking it, partner. This guy's way too big not to be the informant Shira told us to find. The world representative Tirnanog, the fairy realm's giant king, Balor. <laughs> As you gaze up at him in awe, the giant whose name is Balor flashes you a grin. Eyes on the friend three. Looks like we got a small map. Is an infernal thrust boss possibly? Are there any infernal thrust units? I can't remember. This should be fine. This king, though a world representative, chose to be imprisoned in Tokyo as a criminal condemned to death. His reason for this was regret, for he once faced the game's prize at the end of the loop, only to obliterate him completely. In that game, it was obvious from the very beginning who had the advantage that his opponent didn't stand a chance, but he forced the fight even so. Ever since that loop, this king has remained caged, distancing himself from the inner circle of the warmongers. And that's so, deep within the bowels of the prison, my only comfort was the smoke that flowed about my lonely self. Although I suppose I was not truly alone, even now I can hear his graceless footsteps coming down the stairs toward my cell. Those steps meant that he had come to visit me, as he often did. That prison was his charge, so it is perhaps unsurprising that he was one of my few companions. After all, we had something in common that neither of us ever left the prison, so we would while the hours away together, puffing bitter smoke. Don't you have anyone else to talk to besides a condemned wretched like me? Ha! <laughs> Being the warden must be such a cr cushy job. Hmm. You never used to talk to me like that. Not before you allowed yourself to be incarcerated here. Now, remind me what the point of all this was again. Was this meant to be your way of showing pen penitence for imprisoning your daughter? Or is this about your grandchild? My exasperation with such insults I had long s since passed into admiration. This man truly enjoyed reciprocating slander with slander. Had it not been for the irons around my wrists, I likely would have slaughtered him. Alas, my fists were restrained, and knew that nothing good would come of hitting him. All I could do was regret having once drunkenly revealed my past to him. A fair call. The story I told him that day went something like this. In my earlier years, I obtained the evil eye after losing one of my own to cursed smoke. Back then, I spent my days on the battlefield as a warrior king. To the victor go the spoils, and the loser left with nothing. I killed many as a warrior, and I was proud to be a monarch who could put his life on the line. My evil eye killed everyone who looked upon me in the arena of war. I wasn't long before I was known as an evil king, worthy of fear and hatred. My home, the fairy realm of Tiernanog, as the world of eternal youth. But contrary to expectation, the rulers of this realm are always well into their old age. They are usually bearded men, attended by a host of younger fae. Such is the way of Tirnanog, that its rulers age in place of their own subjects. This means that they will someday, inevitably, require a replacement. In other words, the most irreplaceable individual in the ageless realm of Tirnanog is its king. The most replaceable individual. Even I, who felled every last enemy of the realm, shouldering all the fear and hatred of the world upon my shoulders, knew that my time would come to an end. 
Soon, it approached. It was the seers who read my fate. They told me thus. The grandchild shall be the death of King Balor. This was reminiscent of how I killed the former king, one of Tuatha de Danan, in order to usurp his throne. History is nothing if not a cycle. Fearing that this prophecy would come to pass, I imprisoned my daughter in a tower. Yet she still found love and eventually bore a child. My grandchild's name was Luke. He, I hear to be, took a human form in this Tokyo. That is how I came to be here, falling close behind the one who supposedly spelt my doom. Hit me! How fickle the whims of fate can be. I came so far, only to find that my grandchild was unbelievably precious. I saw my gr daughter in Luke, and part of my younger self too. The day I saw the life leave my grandchild's eyes, I finally understood what I had feared. It was fate itself I loathed, from the bottom of my heart. The idea that had been determined that I would be killed and there was nothing I could do about it. As if that wasn't enough to bear, fate had decided that my grandchild would be killed as well. I felt that, and that I wanted nothing more than to slay fate itself. I regretted not having displayed the dignity of a king. I wished, more than anything, that I had shown my grandchild how a true warrior meets their end. I get it, Valor. I can really put myself in your shoes. That must have been rough. Sounds rough, buddy. Though it's true that he got on my nerves time and time again, it's also true that this got Lipoka and I somehow got along. He was the one who told me all about Mahakala. Just a sow. In war, both sides kill and share the chances of being killed. Tiscali Poka and I would talk freely with each other and often find that our opinions matched. Yet Tiscali Poka is no more. After all the battlefields he survived, he found one he couldn't cross. He vanished, leaving nothing but a wisp of smoke in his wake. I sent him off with a gufa, watching over his last moments from Mir in my cell. Oh. I thought he left. Like long after, or long before uh, he died. After all, what better end could warriors like us ask for? I'm sure Tuscali Poker would agree that it was the fine way to go. We lived recklessly, just as we saw fit, earning us nothing but resentment from our loved ones. No matter how miserable people like us die, those we wished would care have no tears to shed on our behalf. Still, even if you have nothing more real, of real value to be remembered for, you've at least got the right to leave behind a wisp of smoke. That might even get you a free tears to your name if that smoke were to sting someone's eyes. And if no one else is willing to pipe up, I'll be one to say it. Yours was the true warrior's end to Scout Epoga. Curses. The smoke of the battlefield must be getting to my eyes. Ah, uh, he cares about him, but there's no time for that. I'm being called away. For seeing as that reminded me that there are still things I must do in this Tokyo. Of course, I have no reason to fight my grandchild any longer. My true wish is something else, and I have yet to realize it. And so long as my dignity as a king, my honor as a warrior, and my proud soul still smolder within me, I will not give up. The evil eye spreading its cursed poisonous smoke cannot be contained. Balor's massive body staggers, sending a wave of decay in all directions. Every last tree, flower, and blade of grass that enters his line of sight rots and withers. Don't look at him in the eyes, partner! Get behind some 
What the? F feathers? What the heck's going on? Fluttering in the air all about you are sacred warding feathers of the divine bird, Khan Gaudid. The feathers obscure about Laura's sight and block the smoke being emitted from his evil eye. Ah! Ah! It's a Varga. Without mean meaning beat, the one who lets loose the feathers leaps onto the giant's back, forcing his smoking evil eye shut. Whew! Never need me to task this. Balor! Your eye shut now. Thank you, Varga. Well, that I could do it myself. It's such a darn pain not being able to control my own eye. Back home, I used to take four of the, my smorted soap and, or close it, you know. Anyway, that was close. I nearly killed all of you. <laughs> you sure have a sick sense of humor. But I don't hate that about you, old man. <laughs> well, I'm sure you've got lots to discuss. I'll leave you to it. With those words, the man who let the feathers loose retreats several steps, allowing his giant companion to take the floor. So, here we are. <laughs> He's so huge. His laugh is like an earthquake. Hey, you're the one that killed Balor. That's right. I am known as the giant king of Tiernanog. I am also one of the 23 world representatives, just like my old friend Tiskali Puka. You remember him after killing me, take it. <laughs> I've heard all about you from this loop from Tescali Puka. More than I care to remember, in fact. He really liked to run his mouth. Hey, Balor, save your small talk for someone else. All we need to know is if you're getting any info in Mahakala. Hmm? The only thing about Mr. Mononobe. <laughs> I expected this, but it still stings. We finally meet, and all you want to hear about is Mahakala. I might be a stone cold killer, but even I have my sensitivities. I'm not sure I want to tell you anything at all now. <laughs> but, but? You do realize that every last world representative has a score to settle with you, right? I'm no different. Not only that, but I was a tyrant of great infamy in Tiernanog. It's only natural for me to demand what I want. So, what will you do? Will you fight me? If it is information you want, you'll have to beat it out of me, Arthur. You would not have stood a chance against any world representative the last time we met. However, with that double dragon of yours, you might just be able to stand against me. <laughs> Uh, he even knows about our ace in the hole, partner. What are we gonna do now? Um, partner, what are you doing? Nice bulge. Prostrate yourself, you farming bag. <laughs> partner. Does he mean that much to you? The one Mahakala has patched up like an old sock. Mr. Mononobe has done so much for me. He's been helping me from day one. He's the closest thing I have to a parent. Hmm. I want to do something for him this time. I want to help him like he helped me. And I can't just abandon him after all that. I see. It's because you don't like being a spectator in your own life, am I right? Come on, Belor. We're begging you here. Tell us what you know. Anything would help. Kingo runs over and throws himself on the ground beside you, joining you in a prostrate position. Ah, This is just like that scene from Danganronpa's V3. If this is how we're doing it, partner, then I'm in. Because partners stick together. Thanks, partner. <laughs> you know, I used to only care about brawling. Never thought I'd be end, up, end up doing some crawling instead. You've changed me, partner. But for some reason, I don't hate it. <laughs> Arison, I... <laughs> no! What's wrong? I don't like this. 
Something powerful is coming. Well, Lord senses must be a little sharper than yours, for he is the first to whip around and glare in the opposite direction. Then the earth begins to rumble as, as though trembling in fear. Is this, uh, Shiva? Isn't he, like, valiant? Not infernal? Ooh! War bonkers music! Hell! Why now? Of all the bastards, show their face! Why did it have to be you, Shiva? <laughs> retreat! Evacuate the immediate, the immediate vicinity! I repeat, all troops, drop your weapons and evacuate this area now! <laughs> this is so cool. Oh my god, I love it. Every single soldier with the yeah, shot withdraws with great haste, knowing all too well what is coming. Just as no one would willingly remain, knowing what a, that a volcano is at moments from eruption, just as no one would fail to take shelter, knowing that a great earthquake is imminent. They scatter, aware uh, that what approaches is a calamity far greater than any such disaster. <laughs> Who's that? The transient who appears in your midst has something like an uh, uh, eye on his forehead, though it is shut tight. He stands still, as though to contain some immense per power within himself. And yet, what little energies escape his bodies are so calamitous that the world around him appears to cry out in fear. It is almost as if the world is roaring its final death throes. Shiva, why have you come here? The timing is far too precise. Someone must have planned this. And I can't think of I can only think of only one person capable of such a thing. Guildmaster Bertro. Yes, he does have that information to protect. <laughs> as many powerful beings as there are throughout the many worlds, not many transients have the potential to annihilate an entire universe. Mounted upon his mechanical wolf, the bear's boy stares out across the battlefield from a great distance. <sighs> the level of destruction he can bring is on an entirely different scale, even from his peers. His name is Shiva, and he is the transient who will one day bring about the end of this universe. He alone has what it takes to stand against King Balor and his evil eye. <laughs> It's been a while, eh, Shiva? It has indeed, Balor. If my revived memory served me correctly, the last time we met was when we traded blows in a previous loop. That was a good bout. I'm glad to have had the opportunity to face you yet again. Oh. I am told that you and Tiskali Poka have turned your backs on the Warmonger's Peace Treaty. As I'm sure you've realized by now, the Guild has sent me to penalize you for your actions. If you have anything to say for yourself, get her off your chest now. If not, then let us have our fists do the talking. I promise you, I will at least spare your life. For as a monk of discipline, all I seek is to better myself through bat battle. So he's a world representative too. He seems more reasonable than Tasaki Pope, but anyways. I suppose he is. Except when it comes to you, that is. What do you mean? Hmm? It is then that Shiva notices you. Recognition flares to life in his eyes. You! What'll I do? What's this guy's deal? He looks like he's out for your blood, Arson. Listen to me. You have the memories of 23 individuals with you, each of whom was once banished by a world representative. Some were sealed away, others were defeated in battle, and others were exiled by the law of the land. The list goes on and on. However, unlike all other representatives, there is one who went beyond mere banishing. One who completely and utterly annihilated the physical form of one of those 23. Shiva. Mm. I'm going to need the two of you to buy me some time, but don't even think about attacking him, understood? Leave everything to me. When I give the signal, I want you to run as fast as you can from this place. Wait, is this a survival mission? 
What? The Balor, Balor? What are you doing this? We only just met. It might seem that way to you, but... Know this. There are those who rejoice in the simple fact that you're born in this world. <laughs> now, you know small talk. Here he comes. If this is a survival mission, I regret bringing uh, Nian and Kenta. Shit. <laughs> survival mission. Oh no! I'm not ready for this. God damn it. Uh, no. Okay, how does this? Well, first of all, I'm just gonna need to have one person get aggro. And I will let that be. What's it called? I, I, I really don't want to do diagonal moves this way. Whatever. <laughs> okay, you stay there. Off? I hope he doesn't. That would suck. Like, a lot. Does he have extended movement? I hope not. We live in... <laughs> Diva Loka, one of the 23 worlds connected to Tokyo, strives to achieve immortality through the cycle of rebirth. Call it what you will, the cycle of reincarnation boils down to the recycling of old life into new. For the inner self and the universe are one and the same. Though one's physical form and perceptions may wither and die, the self is eternal. Monks of the Voloka aim to take dominion over their physical and spiritual selves through rigorous training of their body and soul in order to achieve deliverance from the cycle. The relinquishing of all worldly desires is the one thing these monks strive for. Yet for all his training, there is one who kindled within Shiva the burning flames of desire. This individual once ruled all of Devaloka, astride the Meritharian Makara. After pressing every last attachment onto Shiva, namely rule and even love, this individual simply left. Once known as Varuna, this individual felt so far as to have dominion over nothing but romantic desire, Becoming known as Kamadeva. Finally, disposing of this last rule, he went as their faithful Mount Makara. This individual fled to the farthest reaches of the world, 
However, even then, the attachment left upon Shiva's heart by Kamadeva uh, has continued to burn feverishly, as it does to this day. What? I thought he was obliterated. I guess he got away. You... I will never forgive you! How dare you force this trifling desire upon me! Now th that there is no treaty to hold me back, I shall vanquish you utterly! Ah! Watch out, Arthur! The ground just exploded! I've never seen power like this. This is madness. This is nothing. Just consider yourself lucky that his third eye isn't open. But no matter. He brought me all this time he needed. Glare of the doomed! Smoke billows out from Balor's evil eye, clouding Shiva's vision. Now, get out of here, you two! And don't you dare look back! <laughs> but Balor, we need to know more about Mahakala! Mahakala does not exist in this world. That name belongs to the being who is not in Tokyo yet. What? But that doesn't make any sense. Back then, they said their name was... Then who was possessing him? Listen carefully. I am not saying Mahakala doesn't exist. To be precise, they cannot exist in this Tokyo. Think back. What was it that they were doing? And where were you when you spoke to them? I'm sure you've met many individuals like them before now. And for the same reasons held by those people you know, Mahakala cannot manifest here. Hence why certain individuals are trying to build a system for them. They want to create a means for that being to exist within this Tokyo. Do you understand? Mahakala is the name of both the being in question and the system that allows them to exist. What? How's that possible? Even there are two Mahakalas? That's right. I'm glad you're quick on the uptake. <laughs> Let me make one other thing clear. If Mahakala were to materialize in this world, Tokyo would cease to exist. That doesn't sound good. Do you know where they are, Belor? Well, the Warmongers have two ultimate weapons. The first of these is another other than Shiva, though he's still considered incomplete. As for the second, the Warmongers must intend to deploy it in this day as well. Since Shiva is currently here in Ikabukuro, they'll undoubtedly use the second weapon in Kabukicho, Shinjuku, the other battlefield. After all, they cannot afford to have these two weapons clash in the same location. If you want to know more about Mahakala, then Kabukicho should be your next destination. With that, Balor glares at you with all of his kingly majesty he can muster. There is nothing more I can tell you. The rest is up to you to ascertain for yourself. Now, off with you! Get out of here before I kill you myself! Promise me you'll live to do this. We've gotta go, partner! I'll kill you if I have to! Zilat Basher! Sorry, Malor, but you only went for this. With his electrically charged body accelerating at great speed, Kengo sweeps you up in his arms and carries you away. I wonder if Kengo is also able to use Sword's powers. Because I know I was able to use a uh, yokes with thoughts. <sighs> How dare you, Balor? How dare you let me get away? Incredible. The sigh of mine annihilates anyone who looks upon it. Yet you stand here unfazed. I suppose are the those are the fruits of your training, as you work to contain your third eye's powers of the universe's soul destruction. Or is it that you're simply afraid? Do you fear opening your own eyes? Are you scared of facing your own desires? If that's the case, then though you may be known as the most powerful being in all of the worlds, there are still just a piece of Mahakala, you immature whelp. <laughs> Balor! Wow, Shiva's angry. Together, you and Kengo run along the walls of the enclosed city. As you finally arrive in Kabu as you finally arrive in Kabukicho and pass under the gate, you see what it has become. 
it's everything is really starting to look like our flashbacks now or rather our memories from the past starting with Azazos and then with uh, Skali Poco. The city is now in a dev devastated war zone just like Ikabukuro. Large map uh, with troopers or rangers whatever you call them. Uh, Queen of the Night 1. Okay, let us continue. <laughs> 